welcome back to my channel. So I know you guys already know that I already reviewed the Fenty Moroccan Spice palette. If you haven't seen that actually, I'll link it here on the screen. Don't forget to come back to the video after you go look though. I already did a first impression on it and I really loved the palette. And I wasn't going to film another video with it, but the more it sits in my beauty room and the more I play with it and make Instagram looks with it, the more I felt like it didn't really get showcased enough in a video. And I felt like there was a lot more stuff that I could do with it that you guys might want to like use as like ideas if you did buy it based on my glowing review of it. So I figured today it was a good idea to do a three looks one palette with the Fenty Moroccan Spice palette. Before we get started, um, everything that I use to create the looks, the palette, like whatever little extras I use on top of that, the lip stuff, I'm going to link that all in the description below. I always do. I just usually forget to mention it and assume you guys will just look there if you want to know where it is. Just in case you don't know, everything's always linked. We obviously have a lot to go through today because uh, three looks is a lot of damn looks and I say that every time but I really just don't want to keep you guys sitting here like the whole damn day, you know? But first, if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe because I would love to have you stick around for more videos. Just hang out with me, talk about makeup, like goof around, like talk about what we think of things in the comments. I think it's a really good time and uh, I would love to have you here for it. And also, if you don't mind, please take a second to hit that like button because it really helps me out and I would super duper appreciate it. It also lets me know that you guys like this type of content so I'm able to hone in on the things that you guys want to see on this channel. I think that's all the information I need to stuff down your throat before we get started. So let's get into the first look. For the first look, we are going to keep it very, very simple, but it's going to have a lot of impact and also your friend Nicole is going to be dabbling in cool tones today. I know, crazy. I'm gonna start by going into the shade Shisha Smoke on a MAC 217 brush. And I'm actually going to be smoking the entire eye out with mostly just this color and then deepening it up a little bit later. So I'm gonna put it through the crease, but I'm also gonna pack it down to the lash line. deepen that up a little bit with the color Fez Up. For some reason on camera, this color doesn't look quite as dark. I'm hoping that doesn't mean that it's not going to do what I want it to do in the outer corner right here, right now. I'm gonna find out. Oh no, it's just, it'll be just fine. I'm applying that just to the outer corner and the outer part of the crease with the BH number seven brush. I want this look to be sultry, smoky all the way around. So I'm going to do the lash line super dark. So I'm gonna do my top and bottom lash line with the Anastasia Dark Side Gel Liner Pencil. A couple of you guys asked me in my last video about the new Kat Von D Waterline Liner, um, what my favorite black liner is for the waterline, and this is it. Next, I'm gonna grab my Sigma E30 pencil brush and I'm gonna go back into that color Shisha Smoke. And I'm gonna smoke out that lower lash line using the same color that we used on the top. As time goes by. Next, I'm gonna take a smaller pencil brush. This is one from Makeup Geek. And I'm gonna go back into that shade Fez Up and I'm just gonna put a little bit of that on the outer corner and connect it into the outer corner of the top just to continue that color there and also just to give it a little bit more like a little bit interesting color nuance so it's not just all one shade all over. Now that we are good and smoky, I want to brighten up the inner corner a little bit, but I want to make it a little bit more interesting than just your typical champagne color in the inner corner, because why not? So I'm gonna use this shade up here, Moroccan Ice, which has like a very strong pink shift to it that you wouldn't expect. Putting that up on a Morphe E18 pencil brush and I'm going to dampen it with a little bit of MAC Fix Plus the coconut one. Mm -hmm. Now that we have that little bit of a pink in the corners, it's giving me kind of like a little bit of like a unicorn. 
first, but I've been meaning my leg. Like, I'm gonna go pop on some lashes and then we'll figure out what lip to pair with this because quite frankly, I don't know. All right, I popped on the House of Lashes Allura Light Lash, which uh, as you guys probably figured out by now, one of my favorites at the moment. Uh, I'm a little torn about what lip to pair this with, so I'm gonna do something a little extra looking. And just with the caveat, that if you wanted to, you could easily pair this with a really simple nude lip and just be popping and be fine. I'm gonna start by lining my lips with the Kat Von D Everlasting Lip Liner in the color Love. And I'm going to fill the center with the Kat Von D Liquid Lipstick in the color K-Dub. And you know what? I was going to put a glitter lip topper on this, but I think it's a lot as it is. So I think I'm just going to leave it here. And what that means is that this is the first look. Okay, for the second look, I'm going to recreate something that I did with this palette on Instagram last week. And you guys seem to actually like it because it did fairly well on Instagram, which nothing really does well on Instagram anymore, but I digress. But so if something does moderately well, I'm like, ooh, okay, people must like this one. To start, I'm gonna go in with the color Quicksand right here. It's kind of like a peachy tone. And I'm putting that through my crease on a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush. If I keep looking this way, it's because I'm using my own photo as a reference photo for this so I can remember how I did it. And I'm bringing that peachy tone pretty high above the crease because I'm going to actually deepen the crease with an entirely different shade. Next, I'm going to go into the shade Evil Genie on a Nabla concealer brush. I like this brush for picking up just a shade and putting it over the entire lid. And not even for concealer. I don't even use brushes for concealer usually. And I'm gonna put that over the entire mobile portion of the lid and bring it right into the crease, but stop it right there. It's not gonna blend up past the crease at all. And I'm gonna blend it into the crease a little bit with a BH number seven brush, just so that line isn't super harsh, even though I'm gonna add another color into the crease, like it's still hard to get rid of a super harsh line with another shade, so. Might as well soften it up a bit now. And the number seven brush is on the smaller side, so you can kind of like get it in there without spreading the color up over your crease line, if you feel me. I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of Quicksand on a Sigma E36 brush and just go above that crease again, just to add a little bit more of that peachy tone, but like keep it concentrated lower. I just don't wanna spread it too high up, but I do still want it to be visible and not like completely blended away. So like as I work on the rest of the crease, I might return to this step a couple of times as I see necessary. Sometimes that's how you gotta do it. I'm actually gonna clean that same brush off on my color switch sponge and start deepening the crease a little bit. I'm going to the shade Shisha Smoke, Shisha she, she Shell, she shell, she. Shisha Smoke. And I'm gonna put that color where the turquoise meets that peachy tone. For the outer corner, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of this shade Suk It To Me. On a pencil brush, this is a MAC 219S pencil brush. I don't want this darker shade to take over the lid. I like the brighter turquoise, but I think that it just adds a little bit of shape and dimension to the outer corner to, you know, deepen it up a little bit. So for the bottom lash line, I'm gonna work with some red tones and an obligatory disclaimer, I'm going to use a lip liner in my waterline. It is not technically waterline safe. It's also not good to use something in your waterline if you've used it on your mouth before because you can give yourself an eye infection. Please keep all of these things in mind if you plan to recreate this look. There are red eyeliners out there that you can use that would be safer or if you know of one that is eye safe, you can use that or if you risk it like me, just know that it can be risky. The one I'm going to use is the Kat Von D lip liner in the color Misfit. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the color Human Get It on a Real Technique shading brush and sweep that underneath my lower lash line, pretty much across the whole lower lash line. Now 
Next, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the shade Saffron on a Thrive Cosmetics smudge brush. Why can't I ever say smudge brush? I don't know why that doesn't wanna come out of my mouth properly. I'm gonna take that reddish color and I'm gonna push it on the outer portion of my lower lash line. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the shade Mirage on an e.l.f. pencil brush and I'm going to use that to highlight the inner corner, just a subtle inner corner highlight. I don't want it to take over the look. I just wanted to brighten my shit up. Shortly I'm gonna pop some lashes on which will bring this look all together. First I'm gonna put down a little bit of black liquid liner right along the lash line. This is the Fenty Fly Liner and I'm just using that to give the lash band somewhere to sit and just to make the lash line look a little bit more rich and neat. I don't know, I've been really into doing it this way lately. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, House of Lashes Juliet Lash to finish off the look. I had a hard time applying these today. I don't know why. Probably had too much coffee before I sat down to film, which is never a great idea, because you get all like this, and then you gotta go like this. For the lip, I'm actually going to use the same lip liner that I used in my waterline. I scrubbed the top of it off on a paper towel so that it doesn't have any of the part of it that I put in my eye, just FYI. I kind of blended that toward the center a little bit. It doesn't really need to be the most even of all things because we're gonna put a red shade in the middle and it's gonna cover it up because it's very opaque. For the rest of the lip, I'm going to use the Balm Creamy Lip Stain in color Ni Hao, which is red and it's glossy. And these are delightful, by the way. They're minty and like, they have like a mint vanilla thing going on. They're comfy on the lips. They last a long time. I'm a big fan of these actually. Delightful. Now, if you are satisfied with the fun level of this look, then by all means, you could absolutely 100% leave it like this. You could even do less. You could pair it with a nude lip. You could do whatever you want. But because I wanted to recreate the Instagram post that I did, I am going to add a series of freckles across my cheeks and I'm gonna pepper in a few black hearts with those freckles. To create the freckles, I am going to use Freck is a little like liquid brown thing that is specifically made to create fake freckles and I've been using it because I paid for it and I bought it but first of all can we talk for a second about how flippin small that is how small this was $20 20 bucks you guys and honestly it does a perfectly fine job of creating freckles but I also feel very vehemently that you could absolutely 100% do exactly as good a job at creating fake freckles with a brow pomade. So do I recommend buying this? No. Do I use it because I have it? Yes. So just keep that in mind. One thing to note if you do use Freck is that when it first goes on, it's definitely more warm toned and then like it dries down to like a darker, cooler tone. But if you spray your face with a setting spray and it wets it again, it turns red again. And then when it dries, it goes back to normal. So the first time I did it, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> and uh, it, it turned out fine. Now I'm gonna pick up the Milk Makeup Tattoo Stamp. This is the heart one. And I'm just gonna do like two or three on each side. And I like to kind of like turn the angle for each heart so it looks a little bit more scattered. One thing I noticed about using this on my cheeks is that the, sometimes like where I have deeper pores, it doesn't get all the way in there. But what I do is I put it down and then I dab over the parts that didn't get completely opaque because of the shape of my pores with a regular eyeliner to fill it in. All better. And this is the second look. Okay, look number three, that many, three. <laughs> I already did this once and then uh, I hated it and I wiped it off. So 
that's where we're at with this. I'm gonna start by grabbing quicksand again on a Sigma E40 tapered blending brush. I'm gonna put that through my crease and I always forget to bring this up in my videos, but if you guys ever want 10% off Sigma, I have a Sigma code, it's Quinn 10. Um, you can get 10% off your order at Sigma, always. I always, I'm, I'm not a good affiliate person though. Like I, I'm never good at pushing my affiliate codes. Like I'm sure Sigma hates me cause I like barely ever mention it, but figured while I thought of it, I'd let you guys know. To deepen the crease a little bit, I'm gonna use a little bit of the shade Fez Up on a Sigma E36 brush. This is like a tiny, tiny blending brush. I'm just gonna put that in the deep part of my crease. It's like putting it in the butt crack of your eye, if that makes sense. And for this look, we're gonna be using like a really thick wing. So I'm not really gonna worry too much about how this section over here ends because we're gonna cover it anyway. I'm gonna use the Fenty Fly Liner. And essentially what I'm gonna do is create an ombre with shadows over this black line, but I'm gonna leave the outer corner black because I feel like that's what gives your face that definition and that shape when you do a winged liner. So I'm gonna start with the lightest shade, the medium shade, and then like let it fade into black over here. So I'm gonna pick up my MAC 266S brush, which is like a soft angled brush, and this shade Evil Genie. And I'm gonna start applying that on the inner corner and then stop it and fade it out like right around the pupil. I'm gonna dampen that with a little fixed plus because it's not quite going on vibrant enough over the black for my taste. There we go, there it is. For the pupil, pupil? <laughs> and from the pupil to like pretty much right before the outer corner, I don't know, I'm gonna fade it out and see how it lands over there. I'm gonna use this darker shade here, suck it to me, suck, suck. I know that the actual markets in Morocco are called the suck, but I can't say suck it to me. It just sounds weird for some reason. When it, I don't know why. Okay, I went ahead and cleaned up underneath my eyes wow, this is so much better than the first time and I'm really glad I took it off and redid it. The lower lash line, I'm gonna go into a little bit of the color Cumin Get It on a BH number no. seven brush and I'm just gonna lightly, lightly, just softly blend that along the lower lashes and underneath the wing, just to give it a little bit of definition there, but not anything too deep and I'm gonna blend it out a lot. Outer portion of the lower lash line, I'm gonna grab Suck It To Me again and the BH number nine brush and I'm just gonna press that color into the lash line and connect it into the wing. For the inner corner, I'm gonna grab a little bit of the color Casablanca on an e.l.f. pencil brush. I'm gonna dampen that just a little bit and I'm gonna put it on the inner corner but I'm also gonna drag it underneath the lower lash line. So the bottom portion of the inner corner and then down here a little bit. For the waterline, I wanna brighten that up and open the eyes. So I'm gonna grab my Tarte Fake Awake pencil and just run that through my waterline. I'm just gonna go finish out the other eye, pop on some mascara and lashes, and then we will add a lip. Okay, time for lips. Now this is my go-to day-to-day top secret lip combination. Are you guys ready? It's not top secret. It would be very stupid for it to be top secret because literally the only reason I'm here is to tell you guys what I use. So that's dumb, but this is what I use. I start by lining my lips with the Nabla Velveteen Lip Pencil in the color Body Language. I think I overdrew a little too much today. Who cares? I'm gonna fill the center in with the Kat Von D Studded Kiss Cream Lipstick in the color Ophelia, which is like mm, the most delicious, very fair, but like still has a little color to it nude. Ooh, I love it so much. And if I feel like the color of Ophelia took over a little bit because it is very opaque, I'll just go back in with the body language along the edges. 
just to give a little bit more depth back to the corners because I like the way it shapes the lips like that. And a lot of days I'll just leave it like this because I just find a matte lip easier to wear because it just doesn't get on everything. But other days I like to add just a little bit of gloss in the center. So I use the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. I love this gloss. I was like not that excited by it when I first got it, but I've grown to really love it over the last few months. I just pop a little of that in the center. But I don't put it over the whole lip because I feel like it just looks a little nicer and gives the lips a little bit more poutiness if you just put it in the middle. And that is the third lip. All right, that's all three looks. Uh, I really like this palette, man. Like, it's not the most versatile palette in the world. And a few of you guys have been actually leaving comments and asking me, both here and on Instagram, what I would choose if I were going to buy either this palette or the Urban Decay Born to Run palette. And my answer has been overwhelmingly the Born to Run palette, just because I think it's more versatile. But if you like these looks and you feel like this is something you get a lot of use out of, and you want something a little bit, maybe a touch more adventurous than the Born to Run palette, I really love this palette too. I just wanna say that, like I think it's an absolutely beautiful palette. I actually really like this look and I feel very pretty in it right now and I'm a little bit mad that I'm not going anywhere. So please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed these looks. Let me know in a comment down below if you are going to recreate any of them. I would love to hear about it. Let me know also if you have this palette and how you like it. Just, just you know, leave your opinion about shit down there. I like to talk. Do not forget to subscribe if you have not already because I would love to have you stick around for future videos. And if you would like to either know what videos are coming up or see photos of the looks that I create in these videos or see my more creative stuff like my lip art or just like vote for what I am going to be doing next, go over to Instagram and give me a follow there. I am at Miss Quinface on all other social platforms. But Instagram is kind of where all that stuff goes down. It's where we talk about what we're gonna do next. I poll you guys to see what you wanna see. Um, yeah, just basically everything happens on Instagram, especially on stories. I think that's all I have to say for today. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.